Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I'm of the stars and I just wanted to explain a little to you about rainmaking today uh, and also about what happened last night and today about the rain. Uh, yesterday I went for a Sierra Club hike uh, to Saddleback Mountain up um, Stunt Road to Saddleback Mountain along the trails and what we saw was many stressed chaparral plants that were in trouble because they needed more rain, right? And so I'm going to show you a picture of those in a minute, how it looks and how you can tell. And so uh, while I was on the trail, I took what um, spare water I had on the way down and I watered two um, uh, chaparral plants that looked like they really needed it uh, with the remaining water that I had. And then when I got home, I was thinking about the plants. Now, now trees are something that I really love. I've loved them all my life. And it means a lot to me that the trees in this area and all over Earth should be very healthy. So I got to thinking how I'd had success in the past with rainmaking. That was yesterday afternoon. And I was talking on the Claire Plain with the lady down the hill about it. And... Um, so I just said to myself, okay, I'll just, I'll just ask for rain right now. I'll ask the nature world and the Davis to bring us rain all over the, the county of Los Angeles. Uh, I'd like four inches of rain, uh, steady, gentle rain, uh, followed by intervals when the, the water could sink into the earth with optimal um, amounts of water draining off the land. Uh, so that most of the water sinks in. And so all over the county of Los Angeles, four inches of rain, and I put forth that, that request that that, that that should be happening. So this morning I woke up, and uh, right about mid-morning I went outside, and I was very surprised there was a gigantic rain cloud. Uh, here in sunny California, there was a gigantic rain cloud over the Santa Susana Mountains right across from where I live across the um, preserve, the nature preserve. And while I was looking, it started raining all over the Santa Susana Mountains. And the lady who lives down the hill, she noticed too. She got very excited about it. And she said, she said, bring that rain cloud over here. She said, I'd like to have rain over here as well. And I said, well, you know, you could have rain both places. Let's ask for rain everywhere where it needs to be. So she did. So. Five minutes later or ten minutes later, the rain cloud came over to my place and her place and started raining very gently over there. Well, it was time for me to go to, to get some lunch and to go to a particular movie I wanted to see. So I took off in my car and be darned if the rain cloud didn't follow me because I love rain, right? That's what I think. So when I went in to get the food, it was raining steadily. And when I went out to go to the movie, it was raining steadily there in that place. And when I came out, it was still raining a little. It was great. So then I looked, uh, I thought I'd go check. I'd go check the Saddleback Peak area and see whether it had, because I explained in great de detail about how to get here and how the, the um, chaparral trees really needed the rain right now and the nature spirits were so funny they were i mean they were they're really incredibly enthusiastic they go well let's go see what that looks like right now let's go explore and they went off and looked at that and i said don't forget the red shanks over there they needed to and they go oh let's go look at that right and so that was a lot of fun and so i i was hoping that they could it was you know a medium-sized rain cloud i was hoping they could come here too so while I was going out, um, I heard from the Native Americans, and they're very interested in rainmaking. And they um, they usually don't don't speak except among themselves on the on the uh, astral plane, on the Claire plane. But today they did mention. Um, they said it would be better for us to get together our men, and because men have a lot of power in asking for rain, they can do a rain dance and they can ask for rain. And, and I said, how is that, that they have more power? And they said, well, they stomp on the ground, right? They stomp on the ground. And I think they said at the end, they raise their arms up high and they, they ask for rain, you know, like that. So I thought, geez, 
Maybe a neighborhood event. Who knows? Neighborhood watch, rain, a rain gathering, a rain making session. I'll see if I can interest anyone in that. Or, and I hope that you might be interested too. You could find out the true technique for doing it and you could pursue that because the elementals, the um, spirits of the air and the water, they're very responsive to human thought, to human requests and human enthusiasm about rain and wind and weather, all kinds of things. So, uh, so you have to be very specific, right? You have to you have to say what it is that you really want, and and they are so enthusiastic about responding. That today it was just an incredible day. They were going on and on, and I was too. So I came here to sum it all up. Uh, I came to the place where I was yesterday on an eight mile hike. Yeah, um, with quite a bit of elevation gain for recent days. And I found what I'll show you right here. Now first, as I was coming up, I noticed the rain clouds over the far horizon out towards Santa Barbara. And then I got up to the peak and I noticed this, this big rain cloud here. And there was, it was, there was rain. You can still see a little bit of the rain on the windshield here. And there was misty rain coming over the mountains. Now the chaparral, as you see that, that mist, the chaparral plants absorb that mist as water sometimes. That's their water intake. So they're drinking that water right now. And then down all across this region, down there, I saw rain clouds everywhere and rain everywhere. Look over there. Look down there. See that rain? Look at all that. Rain everywhere. Whoa. So here's the thing, if you want rain, you have to ask for rain. You have to say what kind of rain you want, how long you want it to last, how many inches, how many days, you know, and, uh, and uh, you have to be very specific and very upbeat. Know that, it will, that you have this power, you have this power, and you can, and you have a right to, to speak what what your will is in the world for the um, weather of Earth. I had one conversation on the psychic plane today that's well worth repeating. I hope no one is embarrassed about it. Um, in addition to the Sierra Club, I'm also a member of the California Native Plant Society. And that society um, cares for, is a care taker for a preserve that goes up through a riparian area high up on the mountain into the red shank uh, right here on the other side what I just showed you on the, on the right here and that place is called Cold Creek Preserve and there's a path in the preserve that goes by a, a, um, a cliff that keeps crumbling and so it's difficult to maintain the path, right? And what I found out is that there are some people that care about the Cold Creek Preserve who are preventing the rain from coming there by thinking, by the thought, simple thought process that if the rain comes, then there's a chance that the cliff will collapse onto the pathway and they won't be able to walk through again. So if you have concerns of this nature, the important thing to do is to visualize the rain that, that, your, that your concerned area of the world needs and specify those places where the rain should, should be a little less or maybe not even happen, such as that little cliff area. Okay, so, so that everything else can be watered because it's very important for the plants and animals and uh, uh, the, even the rocks in the mountains that, and in the, in the valleys and by the seas, everywhere, along the coastal scrub, everywhere that it should have a, just the right amount of water f to, to flourish. So we can do that, but by our unconscious thoughts and fears and concerns, we can prevent the area, too, from getting the rainfall that it needs. <laughs> so I'd like to encourage each of you to start your own rain dance in your own rain thoughts and, your, and, and to develop your own rain-making ability with, with crisply delineated parameters and get to know your nature spirits and your elementals. <sighs> 
under Davis. Davis are cool. <laughs> Well, now I'm taking another survey of the rain scene here near Stunt Mountain and Cold Creek Preserve. And I see promising sight off over this way. Back in those far mountains, there's rain in the air. And there may be rain coming down actually on the land over there. Then uh, over this way, there's a chance of rain over this way. There's this giant mountain with a far road that goes up it halfway or two-thirds of the way up the mountain. You can walk up that far road and then turn right and go down into Redwood uh, Canyon, I think it's called, on the other side. Up this mountain here, see that road? Pretty uh, foreboding, but beautiful views and wonderful workout. Then over this way, it looks to me like in the far distance there's a chance of rain actually coming down out of the clouds not halfway down, but the whole way down, and hitting those mountains over there. Back over here to the left, the cloud of rain has moved, moved quickly in this direction, and it's raining more here uh, towards us, closer to us and closer to the big mountain with the fire road on it. Higher up, at the top of um, the mountain here where three roads meet, uh, I noticed that there had been rain because the sides of the road were pretty wet and a little bit muddy. Uh, on the top of the mountain there, the thing of it is that, it, that the airs from the Pacific Ocean hit the top of the mountain here and cause more precipitation and also more mist, mist fall through the mountains. And so it's more likely to get rain than this area where I'm walking right now, which is, unfortunately, I have to say, Way too dry, way too dry. See there? Too sandy dry. I'm going to go check out the trees right now. Specifically the manzanita trees because they're one of my most beautiful favorites and I'm very concerned about them, although all of the trees are worth looking at and figuring out. Okay, here I'm entering one of the trails next to Cold Creek Preserve, but not on it. The one we walked up and down yesterday. And this trail contains some excellent example of stressed chaparral shrubs. One of my favorite right here is the manzanita tree. I think it must be a relative of the madrone tree on the farther northern coast of uh, California that grows such beautiful, um, into such beautiful height and has beautiful red bark just like this shrub. And so I'm pretty sure they're related, but I don't know for absolute certain. They look a lot alike. And then the leaves typically look like this when the tree is not stressed, right? But this tree is stressed uh, for lack of water. And so some of the leaves have turned yellow. And over here too, you'll see lots more yellow leaves. See there? And then over here, after the leaves turn yellow, sometimes they actually die. And here's a case of leaves that have died back because they're just the plant can't support them because of lack of water. All right, so here we have on the same trail a very stressed manzanita plant. And uh, not only are the leaves all speckled, um, some yellow, some brown, and some green, but down here at the bottom we have just a lot of brown leaves where the dieback has occurred. And um, also the bark looks unusual to me. You see a healthy bark of a manzanita shrub or chaparral tree looks uh, smooth like this bark here. But what I, we saw on the trail yesterday uh, was a lot of bark that looked almost blistered. Let's see. Like this. You see those blisters on the bark there? We saw uh, whole trees with blistered bark like that. So I think that's a, a response to, to lack of water and stress. Now here's a very good one, a very fine specimen of uh, manzanita. 
and you'll see the um, the way that the bark is is right now all right I'll get try to get a little bit closer up see how it, it looks all kind of blistered and stressed out look at that very first time I've ever actually seen it see there and also farther up farther up it seems to be peeling back look at that so so this is what I'm asking for is that all these chaparral tr shrubs and trees the elven forest of the Santa Monica mountains should be completely healed uh, through appropriate water water from the from the skies through the the uh, zephyrs of the air and the little the beautiful uh, water elementals as well the silk should blow the clouds where they need to be and that the water elementals should make sure that the right amount of rain gets to the right place so so that's my wish and my hope and if you all each of you wish it with me I'm certain that that is exactly what will happen here on planet earth for all of earth